ծանցության եւ ծանր բահերին քեզ եմ հիշում դույն վահանես իսկ ես քովեկան հաթանակի Good afternoon. It's great to be here with you today on this edition of Armenian Christianity Today. Let's begin by proclaiming our faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to start off by congratulating all of our mothers. Happy Mother's Day. Today is a day of celebration, a day to say thank you to our mothers, our mothers, grandmothers, aunts, and also to all the fathers who, because of life circumstances, have taken on the role of motherhood. Whatever the case may be, I wish you all the best, health and happiness, and may it be a day where you find love with your family and really grow as a family. Take advantage of this opportunity. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. Well, Armenian Christianity today, each week when I come into your homes, I bring this message of how to apply our faith. Now, of course, over this past week, probably the most disturbing news here in the United States has been this case where people, unbelievable, in Cleveland, um, a major city in Cleveland, a man has held captive three young girls for 10 years, and nobody knew. In this home, these three girls were abused, were, uh, they saw all kinds of torturous life. I mean, just the idea of being held captive for 10 years is, is a violation of every kind of imaginable human right as well as natural right of life. And our heart goes out to all of them. Our prayers are with the families and with the, with the young girls. And uh, it, it, is, it is unnerving. It, it, it gets you to think. In fact, in, in my neighborhood, one of my neighbors said, you know, we should start getting to know our neighborhood. Can you imagine that in a big city, people didn't even know something like this was happening? And if it at least stimulates some people to start moving out and reaching people, reaching out to their neighbors and finding out uh, just who we are. You know, in, in our society right now, it's very easy to get uh, cloistered. It's very easy to find a small little niche where you can exist and not really communicate, not really socialize. So if nothing else, uh, God bless all those people who have woken up and said, you know, it's time that we start going out, meeting our neighbors, getting to know people, getting to know and understanding that we live in a society where it's important to communicate with one another. What I wanted to talk to you about today on this edition of Armenian Christianity Today was a very unique story that took place in the aftermath of this kidnapping. In fact, it was revealed that a very famous psychic a very famous psychic, had, had, well, had seen into the future some ten, nine, ten years ago when this kidnapping had just taken place. They went to a psychic because police go to different psychics and the family had gone to a psychic and this psychic had seen that one of the girls was dead. And in fact, looking into the future, supposedly the psychic had seen that the girl was dead and told her mother that don't look for your daughter. Your daughter is dead. Get used to the idea that she's gone. Well, lo and behold, 10 years later, they find the daughter. But what's really sad is the, the, the mother who heard the news some 10 years ago, just a year later, died of heart failure. Now, it could be for many reasons. I don't want to speculate, but it's very easy to, to see the, the correlation right there. At the very least, we can say she died of a broken heart and definitely did have a broken heart with the knowledge that her daughter had died and never having the true knowledge that her daughter was really living and should be pursued. Her life should be pursued to, to try to find her. What I want to share with you this, is this idea of looking into the future. Many times as a priest, people will come up to me and say, uh, do you believe people have certain powers? Especially in Armenian communities where we drink coffee cups. We, we drink coffee and in these cups, you know the tradition, I'm not teaching you anything new, am I? The tradition is to turn over the coffee after you've drank it 
and then read the coffee grounds and they will tell you something about your life what's going on in your life we have this tradition and there's many many traditions like this there's of course astrology which is big you know you look up at the stars and the way the stars move and everything they tell you what your life is about just like the coffee cup or tea leaves many many different ways of predicting the future and also looking psychically into what life is about. So people come up to me all the time, you're a priest, what do you think about this? What do you think? Well, you know what, it's not my place. God gives gifts to many people. But what is my place to tell you is the word of God, which Jesus Christ says, he says, do not be anxious about tomorrow. Your heavenly Father already knows what your needs are. So by looking at cups, by looking at stars, what are you trying to find out? Whether these things are true, whether they have a pole, but you've got to really kind of think, think logically too. Let's, for instance, talk about the Armenian coffee cup, which I know many of you are familiar with. Okay, if you want to believe that these grounds, these grinds, tell you something about your life, well then you've got to believe that somewhere a seed was planted, maybe in Colombia, and a farmer picked up that seed and it was a coffee bean. And the coffee bean made it out its way and was shipped all the way to America. And it found its place at Sako's market. And then they ground it really good and really fine. And then grandma took that, put it in a jezva, and she put some water and a little bit of sugar in there. And then you drank it and turned it over. And now you've got to believe that this dried grinds, <laughs> these dried grinds, are telling you something about your life. You want to believe it? It's your business. But you know what? It's so far from reality and it's so far from what Christianity is about. Christianity is not about destiny. It's not about looking at things like coffee cups and stars and saying, oh, it's written in the stars, it's written in my coffee cups, therefore it must be. Jesus tells us very plainly, he says, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. He says, for your heavenly Father knows what your needs are. He says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all of these things shall be yours as well. Seek God's kingdom. What is that? It's to actualize your life today. When you look at some of the stories that we have, look at last week's gospel passage. Jesus came and said, I came so that you might have life and have it abundantly. What does this mean? That we're going to fill up our, our pockets and we can have abundance by going to the stores and buying houses and buying cars? No, the abundant life is not of material wealth. It's about filling your heart with the love. You know, there's many people who have all kinds of treasures. You have to ask them, what else do you have? You have a lot of stress, you have a lot of worry. If you can't put your head on the pillow at night, what good is all of this stuff? But there are many people whose pockets may be a little bit emptier, but sleep well, are at peace with themselves, and most importantly, at harmony with their surroundings, with their neighbors, with their community, with their people, with their family. And this is what Christ is talking about. Seek first God's kingdom and all else will fo follow. You want to believe that somebody knows your future? It's your business. But what Christ tells you is don't worry about your future. If you want to believe that coffee grounds can tell you what your life is going to be, that's a really sad existence, isn't it? Think about it for a moment. I'm going to base my life on coffee grounds that made it from Colombia to the market to grandma's house and then added sugar and water and now it's for me? Come on. You've got to start thinking in terms of what God has given you, not in terms of superstition. God tells us that your life is yours. It is the gift that I have given you, he says. It is the gift. Treasure it. Every moment that you're in this world is an opportunity for you to share love, for you to practice love, for you to really find how you can lift yourself from your, from your humanity and find that godliness, what Christ says. Seek first his kingdom and all else will follow. You see, that poor mother who got the news that her da daughter was dead, 
you could imagine how devastated she was. She, be, she focused on what might be rather than what is. And this is the biggest challenge that we have. People can always tell you by looking at the stars, by looking at coffee cups, by tea leaves, they will attempt to tell you what, what might be. It's up to you to say, I reject that. What might be is the free will that God has given me. I have a free will to do otherwise. I have it within me to do the good. I have it within me to do what is right. And most importantly, never give up hope. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. In there we find the hope of humanity. Every Sunday at the Holy Badarak, the priest turns and brings the chalice to the people and says, Saye gyank huis harutyun. This is life, hope, and resurrection. There is hope. There is hope despite all the difficulties that you're in of a resurrection, of the goodness that is in God. I pray that you look for that goodness within. Pray for that goodness to come within you, that because God is already instilled within you, the goodness of life, take advantage of that. If you wanna drink a cup of coffee, drink it because it tastes good. Drink it because you want a cup of coffee, not because it's gonna tell you your future. Let's get real with our lives. Let's take advantage of everything God has given us, the beauty that is all around us. May God bless you all. I look forward to being with you again next week for another episode of Armenian Christianity to Today. Until then, I want to remind you to give praise and glory always to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.